Hi everyone, it's Rio Cloud Sync. In today's session, we're focusing on Microsoft Sentinel, in particular the public preview announcement of Data Lake. Now, there are many different challenges when it comes to security data, in particular, in particular leveraging that data and also retaining that data for extended periods, especially in the MSP and MSSP space. Now, I would say this is one of the biggest revelations when it comes to Sentinel, and Sentinel's been around for over five years. So first thing first, before I start rambling on, what is Data Lake? Well, it allows you as an MSP or as a administrator or a SOC analyst to unify your security data across all your different data stores in a cost effective way. And we know after over many years, Sentinel has, let's say, not been the uh, cheapest of seam solutions out there, uh, especially when it comes to QRadar and, and the likes of Splunk. Um, it also allows us to access the data in different modalities, uh, whether or not that be through uh, querying the data via KQL, so custom query language, or even leveraging uh, Visual Studio Code uh, alongside Jupyter Notebooks, which allows us to uh, use the likes of Python and Apache Spark. And I think last but not least, um, the retention of data. Right, whether or not that be uh, through concerns of your own or um, you've got regulatory, let's say, requirements to align to, uh, we can retain data for extended periods. Past the two years, uh, we could typically do in the analytical tier, actually, we can now retain data up to, um, let's say, uh, 12 years. Now, when we get to the demo, um, what I need you to do is access the Defender portal. So you should be in the Microsoft De Defender portal and you can access that through security.microsoft.com or through defender.microsoft.com. And just make sure you have the applicable, uh, let's say role-based access control um, to complete the actions in today's uh, demonstration if you wanna follow along. Now, not only will we be in the Defender XDR portal, we'll also be in the Microsoft Azure portal where we could previously manage our Sentinel workspaces. And that's a key point. Of course, if you are a new customer from uh, 1st of July, 2026, new customers will be redirected to the Vendor XDR portal to manage their Microsoft Sentinel um, instance, right? Which of course is appended to our Log Analytics uh, workspace. Uh, for existing customers using Microsoft Sentinel, there are migration paths to move from the Azure portal to the Defender XDR portal. And I've created a previous uh, video on that. Now, when we get to the demo, how do we actually set up Data Lake? Well, when you first come into the Defender XDR portal, you have a banner which appears in the, uh, let's say the middle service pane here, which says set up Data Lake, right? Um, you would then press the set up Data Lake button, and it'll ask you to append the uh, Data Lake uh, instance to a subscription and to an underlining resource group. Uh, alternatively, you can scroll down on the left-hand side, select settings and select Microsoft Sentinel. And in here, you have a Data Lake um, wizard, which will take you through setting that up and associate it to a subscription and to a resource group, which you can see here. I've associated to SPF Azure plan and the underlying resource group is Sentinel resource group. Of course, this is needed or required for, um, let's say, billing purposes. Um, just a quick uh, note on that as well around the prerequisites. You will have to have a primary workspace set up. Um, so you'll have to have that integration between Microsoft Sentinel and the Defender XDR portal. And once again, like I said, I've created a video uh, on that previously and how to set that up. Uh, but typically it's um, you install the Defender XDR connector through the content hub. Um, you then turn off uh, duplication of incidents and alerts. You then come in here and connect the workspace and you can have one primary uh, workspace. But you can have up to uh, 99 to 100 um, secondary workspace you can filter through via KQL and, 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 and other means. Now, if we come out of here quickly and we go back to uh, where we see Sentinel, um, it's very similar to what we see in the Azure portal, right? So if we come into the Azure portal, we've got incidents. Um, so for our SOC analysts who want to triage incidents and assess them and, of course, remediate them, they can view the alerts in the incidents service pane. Similar, similar uh, similarly to the Defender XDR portal, we can come into Sentinel um, and those incidents 
will be found in the incidents alerts queue in Defender XDR, right? Uh, the key thing here is the primary workspace you use to set up the Defender XDR integration with um, uh, Microsoft Central and the Azure portal will be used to correlate uh, the Defender data sources. The secondary workspaces won't be used. They're just used in context um, of investigations to kind of enrich your data you've already got. Other than that, in the Microsoft Sentinel portal, we've also got, of course, hunting, um, using the logs and using the data we've addressed via the data connectors. We can run KQL against our, our, our data and information. Um, we've got those notebooks we can create through uh, Visual Studio uh, code, workbooks to visualize the data. In essence, everything you see in the Microsoft Sentinel portal here has been lifted and shifted into the Defender XDR portal to create that unified SOC platform so if i quickly go um to uh the table section then now the table section is important because this allows us to change what tier our columnized data is in and also the retention period associated to that data so if i was to type in let's say dns you will see a whole load of, let's say, logs and uh, syslog information around DNS events in my organization from the particular data connectors I've, um, of course, um, set up. Now, here I'm going to be focused on the DNS events um, um, column. Now, with that, you can see it's in the analytical tier. The analytical tier meaning a hot tier, so it's slightly more expensive, uh, but allows us to leverage data in kind of near real time. Um, you can see the table type was sourced from Sentinel and the analytical tier retention for this particular log is 30 days with a total retention time being 30 days. What that means in essence is um, although the DNS event logs are being ingested into the analytical tier, um, you'll find that actually the data is also mirrored down to the data lake tier. All right. Um, and you're probably wondering, you know, are there any cost implications uh, to that? Um, if your analytical retention is the same as your total retention being your data lake retention, um, there is no additional cost for, let's say, mirroring the data down to the data lake. However, if your analytical retention was 30 days and your data lake retention was, uh, let's say, 60 days, of course, you'd be charged on the, uh, the, 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 the 30 days difference between the two. Right. Um, now, if I was to click into this. I've got the ability to see whether or not this data is integrated with Data Lake and the current tier it's uh, associated to. And I'm also able to manage this um, uh, columnized data. And I think the important thing here is when it comes to data, whether or not that be uh, Ceph format logs or, or Sys logs in general, actually what the Data Lake is doing is just unifying that security data. And what it does it, in, in layman terms is converts all that all those different, uh, let's say, supported data types into Delta Parquet, which is just changing your data from rows to columns. That, that's all it's really doing. Um, and when I click into this column, I'm able to see the tier it's on. So I can see it's an analytical tier. I can see the retention is 30 days. Uh, and with the analytical tier, it can go up to uh, two years. And for some reason, it doesn't want to let me select that. But We'll, we'll move past that. You can imagine that that says two years and the total retention of the data lake as well is also uh, 30 days. But we can extend the retention for data lake up to 12 years if required. Now, like I said, when it's in the analytical tier, it by default mirrors down to the data lake tier. So an analogy from that perspective would be um, we've got a data connector. We've got a straight pipe going into the, the analytical tier. And it's like I've got a fork and plugged a fork, uh, you know, use that fork to kind of uh, maybe put a hole, put some, uh, yeah, put a hole in that, that, that straight pipe. And now the data which is flowing through that straight pipe is now trickling down to the data lake tier, but still reaching the analyt analytical tier. That's how I imagine it anyway. Um, or alternatively, we could just actually know this data is not actively used. We want to put it into, let's say, a cold tier rather than a hot tier. Uh, it means we're going to save on 
money as well uh, we can just address it directly to the data lake tier and we can promote that through a kql jobs to the analytical tier um, if needs be moving forward and once again we've got the ability to retain that then for 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 um uh, 12 years um so this is how we can change the tiering of the data and also retain the data for longer now if i go to data connectors of course, data connectors are, let's say, installed by you installing um, packages from the Content Hub store. Um, uh, um, the Content Hub just kind of, let's say, consolidates not only data connectors, but also workbooks, also endpoint analytics, uh, KQL queries for you to use all out the box. Whereas when we come into data connectors, we're looking at the individual uh, the inf uh, information we can then ingest into the workspace. Um, so if I was to click on, let's say, Azure Activity, uh, we could potentially uh, open the connector page and that would then take us to the data connector overview where we should be able to see the current tables associated to this connector and then within here if there are any tables associated with it we can also change the tier from from this service pane as well now you're probably asking actually how do we then leverage the data if it is you know ingested into the data lake tier uh, we've got this option down here called data lake exploration and we can run kql queries against the the, the data all right now the cool thing here is on the top right, we've got a selected workspace and albeit my primary workspace is the Sentinel workspace. Actually, what you'll find is not only are we going to be able to leverage KQA against our Sentinel workspace and all the information being ingested into that workspace, but we can also leverage asset related data. So not only security data, but also asset related data. So if we want to enrich the investigation or the information we're trying to find with, let's say, people information, device information, information we can natively get out the Microsoft for ARF and, and other um, uh, um, semantic searches across the, the, the services, this will help. Um, and this is why I can run a KQL query against this data and go, actually, tell me, you know, project the 10 users in Enter ID, for example. I can run that and it should spit out a result for me and give me my entry users, albeit I'm not ingesting that data into the Sentinel workspace, but because it can leverage the asset inventory, um, it's also able to find that information and, of course, correlate that information with the security information I've got in my Sentinel workspace. Now, um, if I want to promote this information, let's say I was uh, running a KQL query against the data lake information, I can promote it through a KQL job to the analytical tier so that I can um, um, use machine learning um, over the top of the data, uh, run kind of real time analytics and, 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 and leverage data in kind of uh, real time. I could do that through creating the job here. And it will ask me, uh, you know, to give it a name, give it a description, select the, the workspace I want to kind of append this to and whether or not I'm going to append this uh, job to a new table or to an existing table. And when I, if I was to select the next wizard, it will then uh, present me or preview the query I'm going to run and whether or not I want to run this now or schedule this to periodically run um, over a certain amount of days or, or hours. Um, other than that, we can view the jobs. So if we was to create a job, we could then view a job and we can see whether or not that job has been completed or not. Um, that's kind of a kind of a brief synopsis of, of, of the uh, data lake experience in Defender. Of course, we've got other stuff like analytical rules. So, of course, if we adjust the data, we want to be alerted on that data. Or we can create analytical rules. They can be installed through the content hub section. Um, and then once that's done, we could then come into the rule templates and enable these on a, um, a per, 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 per instance basis. Um, we've got the option for anomalies. So if we've enabled a UEBA um, for uh, user uh, behavioral analytics, um, so if someone's being um, maybe uh, atypical in their behavior, um, Sentinel can use that information based on, you know, when they typically sign in over the last, you know, however many years, uh, banana sign in from Russia, then you probably know there's an issue. This can detect that kind of stuff, just like identity protection can detect that in Enter ID. Uh, we've got stuff like watch lists for, you know, um, uh, let's say creating, a, you know, 
you got priority accounts in your organization, right? You've got service accounts, you've got host names, you've got uh, particular uh, um, IP addresses and side notations and stuff you want to protect. Well, you can create watch lists then, which you can then use those watch lists to integrate it with uh, queries you're running moving forward or uh, playbooks you create for automation, uh, that type of stuff. Um, and then, of course, the other stuff is just the usual stuff you, you, you typically find in Sentinel uh, Threat Intelligence. Of course, there's standard, there's premium tiers there, uh, which will detect particular IOCs, um, will give you intel around different uh, nation states and fractures, whether or not it's Storm Blizzard for Russia, Typhoon for China, um, that type of stuff. And of course, it's all built on the Mightier Attack framework as well. Um, and it will give you an indicative of whether or not you're covered fully. Uh, against all these different uh, frameworks uh, and if not it will give you recommendations to uh, to of course uh, imp improve that, that instance um, other than that just to just to quickly showcase also uh, people aren't aware there's actually a SOC optimization uh, tool in Defender XDR as well uh, where it will give you uh, a kind of a high level synopsis of how much data you're ingesting in to your Sentinel workspace um, and then give you recommendations on how you can potentially improve your coverage um, across your organization. Um, so here where we see your coverage against um, adversary in the middle attacks, which typically are used to compromise uh, primary refresh tokens, uh, is, is uh, well, there's an improvement action, right? Um, and we can view details. And where you see this blue here, that's your current coverage against AIM attacks and this gray landscape around it is potentially, you know, what you could potentially increase your coverage to if you was to complete this this action or or, or, or enable this data connector, right? And then you, of course you can then mark this as to say, uh, dismiss, complete or or marked as in progress. Um, but yeah, once more, please check the Microsoft Learn documentation. There are a few prereqs around the um, roles you need to enable this. And when you do uh, attempt to enable Data Lake, um, it can take up to an hour to an hour and a half for it to all propagate and, of course, change your Defender XDR portal, portal so you can actually run the uh, the KQL against your, your organization's data. But yeah, any questions, please let me know. This is a quick video on Data Lake in Sentinel.